Hello, welcome to the ACCA Strategic Business Leader for the Prezi Analysis. My name is Steve Chun. I'll be taking you through to the entire Prezi to be applied to the upcoming sitting exam. Now, the September 2023 exam for the SBL course uh, Prezi material is the company in the airline industry. And we can see the company name is called Coljet Company. Okay. Now, in our course, I've summarized the uh, pre scene materials, key information into these 17 chapters. Now, from this recording onwards, we'll be taking a look at the chapter number one. It's the pre scene material. I break it down for you so you can directly learn and to apply in the actual exam. Followed by the PESO analysis, analyzing the macro environments that the business is operating in. And also the Porter's Five Forces model to see the attractiveness of this industry. And also the Porter's Diamonds analysis, where we're going to be seeing whether or not there will be any other opportunities if I were to expand internationally. I also summarized three levels of strategies applied to the Cojex company as well. And then for different routes that you operate in this industry, we'll be using the Boston Consulting Group matrix, or we can call it the BCG matrix, to be applied to this company. And also the Porter's Value Chain Analysis, by looking at the internal stuff of the company. And also summarizing them into the SWOT analysis as well, so you can directly apply these points to the actual exam questions. I also develop some of the uh, potential, perhaps may come up, questions in the actual exam related to the syllabus, for example, the circumstances when we use the retrenchment strategies we may decide to divest our business to others, for example. And also how to answer the strategic drift questions related to this company. And also performing the cultural web analysis, okay, so we can demonstrate different leadership style and requiring the element within the culture web to be changed from a syllabus point of view. And also the leadership part is very important. And later on in the chapter 12, I will divide this into four categories of leadership style that to be used with practical, actionable recommendations to be applied to the actual case studies. And also talking about the IT related issues, project management, change management, and the key processes in the Cojex company. Finally, followed by talent management because we need pilot okay in our company so retaining staff and motivating staff will be absolutely key from the exams point of view so we will be seeing some of the practical solutions of how to manage our talent which means the human resources now let's recap on the SBR exam firstly the SBR exam nowadays firstly uh, the examiner gave you the pre scene material to be released two weeks before the exam. And this means that if you're watching this video and all the two weeks goes by later on and you will be sitting the SBO exam in front of a computer. This is a computer based exam, 100 marks in total. However, there will only be 80 technical marks. So you are given three hours and 15 minutes to read and plan and to write your answer and this means that 195 minutes in total of course in your exam script you can also see another 10 minutes will be given to allow you to read the instructions on the screen okay about the exam something like that but the actual duration of the exam will be 195 minutes and therefore if I were to take 195 divided into 80 technical marks, there would be 2.4 minutes to be applied to each mark okay, in the actual exam. The exam questions usually will be three questions in the exam according to the 
pre-mock and, and, and also the specimen paper and something like that. Another 20 professional marks, I would say in the SBL, these are quite subjective. Okay? So if you can score well in the technical marks, you will score well in the professional marks as well. Okay? So make sure that you're ready for that. Now the final point about the key exam technique to be applied to the SBL is that if you are given a 10 marks, technical marks, question, how many points that you need to write there? I would say I would like to write 10 sentences. However, it does not necessarily mean that I have to give 10 different points. I can only get, I can only give for example, five completely different points with 10 sentences in that. So for example, for each point, I will explain what it is and why, which means the implications and showing your insight, new ideas, uh, and also uh, stating the risks related to that and also giving a recommendation. Okay, I would say that I probably have written five sentences for that, but I can only, for example, for each point, I would like to write two sentences. So total for 10 sentences, I can easily score these 10 marks. But the question is, it's very tough, okay, nowadays that we can come up with so many points. And this is why adopting a framework-based approach to the SBL exam would surely help with your exam success. And therefore, firstly, we will be seeing the pre-seen information and then we'll be applying these to certain questions and make sure that you're ready for that. Now, just a caveat, which means the disclaimer here, the pre-seen information is not to be used as a tool to predict what will come up in the actual exam. Because the pre-seen material here, which just summarise these, the case information and to familiarize yourself that you are working in this company and to familiarize yourself with the uh, for example the terminologies that you may see in the actual exam and that's it for the case information and also the case questions later on on the exam date this will be shown as exhibit at the same time different requirement will be developed based on different exhibit and therefore it's very very important that you notice this point there's no point in predicting what case scenario may come up in the actual exam because the examiner can structure a different requirement based on such a simple case and therefore it's very important that you need to go through the whole syllabus okay so for example the strategy part the corporate governance the risk and audit uh, and leadership and IT and all sorts of things in there. And of course, in our pre analysis later on, I'll bring the most important elements into this course and, and, and making sure that you focus on the right thing. Now, firstly, you are given the pre seen information rela released by the ACCA, including the introduction of the company and also the industry. And also, the detailed information about the company is called the code JESS overview. And then the website extracts, for example, the mission statements and so on. And also the headline results and cost breakdown for this company as well. It's just to be a few pages, 11 pages information, as you can see on my screen. And do you have to learn them? From my perspective, the answer is certainly no, because you can always click on the pre information on screen when you are uh, sitting the exam later on. There's, uh, there's no problem with doing that at all. Uh, but the key thing is when you decide to bring information or practical or to apply your answer to the case information, it's important that you realise and um, to have some ideas popping up in your mind that I've read this part, okay? The pre because there'll be 11 pages of information. There's no point in saying that I've never read this information at all uh, on the exam date. So you will find it very difficult um, to apply your knowledge 
to the actual case information there. So that's why here, Thursday, first chapter, I'll be seeing the pre seen information application here, summarizing into bullet point. Now, firstly, the company is called Cojex Company. As you can say, it's operating uh, the airline business. It's a low cost, and this means that it's operating the no frills strategy. Okay, so which means it does not add any value. Okay, and you're taking off the flight and taking on the flights, not adding any value at all. So, for example, not offering you the premium drinks and food and so on. And uh, so, for example, there might be additional costs. They would like to check in your packages and so on, and you have to pay for it. So, to my mind, yes, it's operating like businesses like McDonald's, and this is absolutely fine there. And, and of course, uh, I can't say this strategy is rubbish, yeah, because uh, the low cost ticket price will certainly favor a lot of people in the market. Now, it's based in a country called Courland. Courland is the continent of Hungary. So Hungary is like Hungary is like the EU, okay, European Union for example. So within that European Union is based in a specific country, it's called Courland. It's absolutely fine that we we use fake countries in the ACCA exam to avoid political uh, influences by different government. And this is why it's absolutely fine that okay? you don't really have to guess, okay, Courland which country it is. Uh, it's similar like the, the, the UK, for example. You don't really have to do that. Okay. Now, established 20 years ago, it seems to be quite a young business. Okay. So we care about the internal controls, experiences, reputation, that kind of stuff. Now, next point then. Now, is the leading airline companies, okay, ranking the second in terms of the passengers' numbers. Now, what we want to see here is that what would be a market share of that, okay? Even though we are given the market share, okay, we are given the market share, yeah, in the pre seen information, so you can see that. So, 14% of the market share by the Cold Jets company, okay, uh, compared to the first one, it's called Bright Gear, uh, airline company. I'm not sure if I pronounce it correctly, but uh, it's absolutely fine that just 3% uh, of the gap in, mar in terms of market share. Um, it's maybe quite likely that in the actual exam, that our competitor, which means the Bright Gear company, may be releasing a particular new initiative or new plan okay, to decide to do something and we need to catch up with the competitors to gain uh, the, the additional market share or at least not to lose additional market share and we would like to do the same thing and the examiner may give you a case, give you an exhibit about that and then ask you to evaluate that particular strategic option. Uh, so basically we're asked about using the SFA test, okay, the suitability, feasibility and acceptability of the potential strategic option. It's okay then, okay, right. Now, uh, so we, we may need to think about to catch up with the first competitor. Okay, later on. Now, it also operates around a thousand routes in 30 countries across Hungary. Okay, so here is the thing. In the airline business, firstly, it really requires very huge initial investment in terms of the capital expenditure. Second, the business will be subject to quite a lot of regulatory stuff. Okay, so this means that it operates around a thousand routes in over 30 countries. So it's very, very important that we consider the legal risks, okay? And I'll tell you how to do that later on, okay, when we come to the subsequent chapters. And also we are told the head office is located at the near city airport, okay, in the Courland South. 
Okay, that's absolutely fine there. Near city, airport, okay, it's just to be, I don't know, it's the capital city. We're not sure about that, but we need to learn that name so we can quickly apply our answer specific to a case. So I would say that I would need to learn this. At the same time, in South, okay. So not sure where not we have lots of market share and lots of businesses in the northern area, and we'll see that later on. Now, Hungria is politically stable, okay, seems to be like the EU, okay, economically developed, okay, so this means that later on, if economy is bad, yeah, our business, because it's operating a low cost business model, and this is absolutely fine there, it may not affect us so much. On the other side, we may need to balance our portfolio later on. Balance our portfolio. So basically what I mean by that is that currently we are running a budget airline business. How about enter into the premium airline business later on? We're not sure about that. And of course, this could be one of the new strategies we may need to pursue later on. And of course, you will need to analyze it from both financial points of view and also using the SFA test, okay, to see whether or not it's suitable uh, to our business, whether or not performing the SWOT analysis later on, you, you can learn these points and to apply them to, into your answer, whether or not that's feasible in terms of money, time, and human resources and whether or not it is acceptable, okay? So from the risks and rewards point of view, so rewards, we can talk about the uh, management accounting stuff, okay, in the SBL syllabus. Okay, now, um, in the exam, uh, you may be also given the case that Cojet's company is going to expand overseas, okay? So it's to care about quite lots of things, uh, so, for example, whether or not it really allows free trade and movement, how you can get your money back, and this will be one of the political risks that you have to consider. Now, each country in this continent, or in the Hungria, has its own currency. Okay. However, we always use the US dollar. Okay, this is absolutely fine there. Because one of the biggest costs in our company would be the costs associated with the fuel prices. Okay, so the fuel prices always need to consider into that. So usually the fuel prices, the fuel will be one of the commodities will always or most likely to be settled in the US dollar. And if I were to use the US dollar, I can settle that in the US dollar and I can minimize the foreign exchange rate risk. Okay, especially uh, nowadays, as you can say, uh, because of a lot of uh, problems happening in the real world in terms of the COVID-19, in terms of uh, the Ukraine issues. And as you can see, the commodity prices, especially the oil prices and fuel prices, has been increasing over the years. Um, this is why, if I were to use the US dollar, to a certain extent, I can reduce that risk, okay, because it's settled in the USD, and we are afraid of the changes in the foreign exchange rate. And here, it limits our exposure to these forex issues. Now, another point about the introduction in the pre in is that the company operates a point-to-point -point service, okay, so it means that if you like to fly from Singapore to London, you can directly fly from Singapore to London. Uh, but in certain uh, airline businesses, if you, if you want to fly from, uh, let's say, Singapore to London, firstly, you have to fly from Singapore directly to Dubai and from Dubai to London. So Dubai is like the hub. Okay. Now, uh, of course, the company does not operate as the hub airport uh, business model, and, and this saves time uh, for a lot of passengers. 
and especially for the uh, shorter distance travel. And it will certainly favour a lot of uh, a lot of passengers, or we can call it customer later on. Uh, but uh, in the actual exam, that the examiner may develop another case that Coljet's company would like to expand overseas, expand additional routes, and therefore instead of simply be a point-to-point -point service, the, that the Coljet's company may be operating uh, using the hub airport and uh, would like to work with lots of these airports and would consider the cost associated with that and you are facing potential change management, project management issues and you may be asked to suggest the project initiation document or the PIT okay, for such a new issue later on. So it will really depend on the examiner's preference. So the aim of the pre analysis is to really get you to learn the terminology so you can quickly apply them in the actual exam. So position yourself as the management team member itself from a student's point of view will always help you succeed in this paper. Now, after we've gone through the introduction part, the next parts we'll be going through will be the airline industry information. So firstly, founded 20 years ago okay, by the family member and the, the second ranked, second as the leading low cost airlines company okay, in hun Hungary. Hungary, sorry, uh, okay, it's a low cost regional airline business. So we may, we may be thinking about, okay, so from the regional, how about become, to become the international airline business later on, okay, so we can always think about that. Now, let's see the operation details. So you can always apply these points to your actual exam. So for example, okay, we are thinking about whether or not we should expand overseas. Yes, why not? Because we are ranked the second. We've got the good management team and a team of very good staff. And also we operate nearly a thousand routes. We've got experience in doing that. We cover over 30 countries. We've got lots of relationships, okay, with the local airports. We know the stuff, okay, so why not? Okay, so you can always think about that. Now, let's see the service model, okay, applied to this company. Now, again, summarize it as the point-to-point -point service, which means the direct flight, if you like. And the hub strategy, okay, so currently there'll be no reliance on the hub, sorry, hub airport at all. So we can always think about to working with the hub airport, okay, later on, okay. Uh, at the same time, yeah, uh, we are using the no free use strategy. Uh, there'll be cost reduction uh, for the business. And meals are not included as the in-flight services. And also we've got automation, okay? So for example, the bookings and flight documentation and baggage and check-in all are automated to reduce our cost to a certain extent. Now, how about for the route portfolio in the Coljet's company? Firstly, routes between over 130 airports, okay? That's absolutely fine though. We've got lots of experience in dealing with the airports because uh, so when we park our flights and park our aircraft later on in that particular airport, we need to pay the fees on that. So how about for profitability? So routes are very profitable and quite popular and we can ensure that the sufficient number of passengers uh, to be on each flight, okay, so to make sure our efficiency is maintained. You can l simply learn this point, okay, to make sure that you can say that in the exam. Now, the pre information later on introduces from the page six onwards about the industry key performance indicators or KPIs if you like. So the examiner specifically lists six KPIs with the definition in there. So let's see how these can be applied to our company. 
The first KPI is ask, which means available seat kilometers. Now, the available seat kilometers, so basically we are taking the number of seats available. So let's say within the aircraft, we've got a hundred seats. And then we'll be timing by the distance flying. Okay, so for example, in this flight, there'll be a thousand kilometers. So you can convert them into the figure in one year. So the ask will simply be a thousand times by a hundred, and that becomes a hundred thousand seat kilometers. Now, why do we need to measure this? Because we are measuring the capacity of the airline. Okay, so we've got the number of seats here, and we can fly a lot of, to a lot of destina destinations. And this is why it's measuring our efficiency to a certain extent, or the capacity, if you like. However, we can all, we, we will need to always combine the first KPI with the fourth KPI. Because for a fourth KPI, again, we've got a thousand kilometers to be multiplied, but here we need to multiply by the number of passengers. For example, with that 100 seats, we only have got always 60 passengers sitting in each flight. So if that's the case then, the revenue passenger kilometers, or we can call it the RPK, that will become uh, how much? 60,000, okay? 60,000 seats, or you can say that it's passenger kilometers. Now, the higher this figure, the higher the RPK figure will surely be more efficient, okay? So, because from the preceding information, I guess we've got an extensive network, and therefore I can guess that the RPK will be relatively high, okay? So, will be highly efficient, if you like. Again, for the ask or the available six kilometers, as you can say, it's likely that this is high because uh, I would say to the examiner that we're operating over 30 countries, a thousand routes. And, and for each route, for example, from Singapore to London, yeah, we've got a thousand routes and therefore I would say the ask will be quite high. Now, both of these, one is for capacity, if you like, one is for whether or not we can fully utilize these capacities, which means the efficiency, which means the number four, revenue passenger kilometers. Now, additional KPIs may include the revenue per available six kilometer, which means the revenue, we take the revenue and divide this into ask. Ask would be the first KPI, if you like. Now, because we operate as a low-cost airline, and this means that we will have to ensure that the efficiency will be absolutely high there, so which means the denominator will be absolutely high. And therefore, I would say that the RASC, which means the revenue divided into ASK, will be relatively low in general because of the increase in denominator. Okay? We have to ensure that because we are operating the no-free strategy, low profitability initially, and therefore the denominator is quite high, and uh, the RASC, which means the revenue per available six kilometer, will be relatively low there. Okay, now, uh, so in the actual exam, you may be given the competitor information about the RASC information, and don't be surprised that you can see the RASC of the Cogets company is significantly lower than the competitor who is offering the premium airline service okay, to their passengers. So don't be surprised about that later on. How about the next KPI? Okay, we've got the load factor. Okay, load factor. So this means that we're going to be seeing the available seats. Okay, so for example, in the previous example, we've got 100 seats. And how many seats are checked in? Okay, checked in passengers. Okay, so for example, the check in passengers. Now, initially, for example, 
the number of passengers, okay, multiplied by total distance travel, which means the number four of KPI. So I assume there will be 60 passengers paying the full ticket price. However, the actual number of passengers checked in, let's say just to be 58, because two of them decides not to check in, for example. So if that's the case, then the low factor would just to be 58%. Okay. So it will be due, due to a lot of issues. So for example, uh, the passengers may miss the information. So because the, uh, the airline company uh, did not give advance notice to the passenger that uh, about their flight information, about the latest changes or latest updates, and therefore reduce or to change the low factor. We can always use that um, to confirm the efficiency and the internal operation of the Cojets company later on. Now, I would say the low factor, I guess, okay, the company will have a very high low factor because we operate as a uh, no free strategy, which means the low cost strategy. Uh, we can't afford to any additional costs related to that. We have to minimize our costs at the same time to maximize our profit. Okay. Now, the next KPI is the CO2 per passenger. Okay. So it's very important that we consider the environmental stuff, okay, because especially uh, later on, we may try to expand our routes internationally. We have to comply with the local regulation in those countries as well. Uh, and this is why we always need to keep an eye on to the CO2 per passenger. Okay? Uh, there will be no excuse in saying that because you're operating as a no free strategy and therefore we don't focus on the CO2 emissions at all. We don't focus on the reporting issues related to CO2 or the carbon emissions. Uh, at all, there's no point in saying and doing that. And this is why you have to be very careful and um, monitoring this particular KPI when you decide to operate overseas or to expand your international route. The final KPI given by the examiner is punctuality. Okay, so the punctuality says, okay, so uh, the percentage of flights landing on time, okay at the destination airport. So typically 15 minutes okay, of the scheduled arrival time to see whether or not your customer or passenger, if you like, in this industry will be happy about your company. Okay? So if you're not punctual at all, of course, the customer satisfaction or the passenger satisfaction will certainly decrease. Now, moving on then. How about the key air transport statistics? Now, we are given the statistics here, as you can see, Thursday, in our precinct information, in the on the page number four, as you can see here, it's like, okay, as you can see, it's the point to point, okay, it's the direct flight, in other words, hub and spoke, okay, so which means the flights would need to go to the uh, hub airport before it finally uh, arrives at the final destination. Now, we are given the key airport statistics, okay? Now, we are given the statistics in Hungria and global. Global means the whole world. As you can see, we are given the people transported and average number of commercial flights per day and also the revenues. Now, I've done the summary for you. Firstly, let's see the global. 3 billion passengers per year. How about for Hungria? Hungria accounts for 20% of the global passengers. Because if I were to take that 600 million and to divide this into 3 billion, and that becomes approximately 20% on that. So uh, making sure that you can always remember the key statistic is 20%. Okay, I was, I, I'll show you that later on. At the same time, how about the average number of commercial flights each day? Again, 
our continent, which means Hungria, so we are based in Courland, is one of the continents in Hungria. So Hungria accounts for 20%, or you can say that 20.5% of the global flight per day. So again, it's 20% there. How about for passengers' revenue? Now, Hungria accounts for 20% of the global revenue. Now, because currently we are the regional airline business, it's not an international one, uh, but later on we may be thinking about to expand our businesses on other parts of Hungary, so for example on other countries in Hungary. So if this is the case there, this seems to me a very lucrative or uh, a very challenging and very attractive investment opportunities that we can always comment on in our exam. Okay, so we can see that there. Now, how about for the implication for uh, coal jets, which means our company? Firstly, I would say that it's a substantial market. Okay, so it's a significant market. We can further build on our market share later on. And also a potential for growth as well. The examiner may be interested in how you're going to be growing the Cojets company. So for example, one of the ways that we can do is to perform the M&A or mergers and acquisitions of a target company okay, in the same business, potentially in a local country. Or perhaps we may be operating using a joint venture okay, uh, agreement okay, with the local airline companies. And this would be absolutely fine there. But uh, according to my experience, so it's very likely that mergers and acquisition will be a more viable option for growing your business when you expand to overseas. So making sure that you can learn the advantages and disadvantages of the mergers and acquisitions so you can quickly apply them in the actual exam. Now I would say also the competition is quite intense okay, in this particular industry because the market is huge and therefore you will expect severe competition in the marketplace. So how you can differentiate yourself, uh, so later on will be very important, for example, keeping uh, your costs down and, and, and so on. So it's, it's very important that later on we may say that there might be a change in the macro or the micro environment later on. So for example, a potential lockdown of a country in the destination uh, where the country has been subject to, I don't know, the COVID-19, uh, so, or another virus name may pop up in the exam, we're not particularly sure about that. Or perhaps uh, there's an increase in the interest rates and the economy is quite poor, it's quite bad in the target country and therefore affecting the revenue. So for example, uh, if you're taking on flights, but why not use the substitute, okay? So um, the macro environment may change. The micro environments may change as well. So, for example, the, com the competitor has emerged in the marketplace and so on. Now, you may be asked about the change management issue in the exam. So, later on in our course, make sure that you learn my pro forma for the turnaround strategy. Okay, so the examiner is very interested in that. So uh, how you can turn the business around and making sure that you're happy. Okay then, I'm going to stop this first recording now and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. We'll be starting with the industry body in the pre scene material. Bye-bye. A-P-C, accounting for your future.